to patients, their families and healthcare professionals worldwide, cancer and malnutrition can all too often seem to go hand in hand. Can we better understand this interrelationship? Can we advance the role of specialised nutrition as part of an overall therapeutic approach to change the course of health and improve the quality of life? This was the focus of leading experts in the field speaking at a Nestle Nutrition Institute satellite symposium at Espen 2015 in Lisbon. Professor Jens Kondrup from the University of Copenhagen brought into sharp focus the scale of the issue. We know that about uh, 40 to 50 percent of the patients are malnourished when they arrive in the hospital and it's more common among the elderly patients compared to the younger patients. But we also know from a recent study that even more patients are malnourished when they leave the hospital because their nutritional status is not taken care of properly when they are in the hospital. This is such a big issue because we know that patients who are, are malnourished have a worse clinical outcome than cancer patients who are not malnourished. In one recent study, the length of stay in the hospital was considerably longer and also the cost of having these patients in the hospital was much higher because they had more complications. Dr. Claire Shaw of the Royal Marsden shared insights into the complexities associated with treatment. We know that when patients are receiving treatments such as chemotherapy and radiotherapy, then there is a high risk that the toxicity from that treatment uh, can influence their dietary intake and ultimately their nutritional status and overall they may well have a poorer outcome because of that. Discoveries are being made about the underlying causes of toxicity and new intervention and support strategies are emerging. We're learning a lot about toxicities and why they're occurring. Diarrhea is a, a good example and we've had a number of patients through our clinic who are on some of the novel treatments being used for cancer and we've had a group of patients that we've been managing who've got bile acid malabsorption caused by the drug that they're on and that enables it to be much better managed with medication and with a dietary approach. Professor Pierre Deschalot of Rouen University affirmed how critical the brain and gut axis is to the relationship to cancer and the anorexia malnutrition risk. During cancer anorexia we have a combination of mechanisms the first one is that the ghrelin hormone pathway, which stimulates appetite, is not functioning. On the other side, the satiation mechanism that stop food intake are working too much. And this comes from the small and large bowel and probably involves also the microbiota. Of course, there's a lot of opportunity for nutrition in the field of oncology and we expect in the future to have new products able to modulate the gut-brain axis and increase appetite and give the patients all the best chances to face the disease. Nutrition has a particularly significant role for cancer patients facing surgery. There's a recent systematic review of a number of trials that have been done uh, throughout the uh, last few years showing that the rate of complications after operations, uh, after operations is, is decreased by nutrition support, which means that these patients have fewer infections, they have a more rapid wound healing, and they also get discharged faster from the hospital. Immunonutrition also has a key role to play, as reinforced by Professor Christophe Mariette from the University Hospital of Lille. Immunonutrition is a combination of standard uh, nutrition combined to some uh, nutrients that will modulate the immune system and that uh, has been shown through meta-analysis to decrease the risk of postoperative infectious complication in a significant way. In certain situations, guidelines strongly recommend the use of immunonutrition, for example in GI cancer surgery. ESPEN guidelines would recommend with a grade A level of evidence uh, to uh, give to patients immunonutrition before surgery and to be continued after surgery for malnourished patients. As surgical techniques are advancing, so too are therapeutic approaches involving nutrition. As revealed in a multi-center, open-label, randomized phase 3 controlled trial with patients undergoing minimally invasive laparoscopic surgery for esophageal cancer. The MIRO trial was a randomized phase 3 trial looking at the impact of mini-invasive uh, uh, surgery on postoperative outcomes. 
And uh, what we have learned from this trial is that implementing a minimizative approach significantly decreases the risk of postoperative complication after surgery combined with uh, nutritional support, immunonutrition and enhanced recovery program. Forging a greater role for nutrition in oncology care is a shared goal. All too often today, nutrition support is considered a voluntary add-on to the regular treatment of cancer patients. But it should really be seen as an integrated part of any cancer treatment. And this is the view we want to share with oncologists and hem hematologists so they can see that their patient's outcome will improve with proper nutrition support. To identify people who need dietary advice, the first important step is nutrition screening. And the second uh, important step is enabling those patients to have access to a, a registered dietitian to get that advice in a timely fashion. Regarding the future in, in nutritional support in cancer, I think that um, uh, nutrition may uh, be um, evaluated in the preoperative and postoperative phase during chemo in order to improve outcomes in combination with the preoperative phase. We have very strong evidence now that nutrition is very important for the patient at each step of its journey, but we have to improve our practice to go on with research and find new opportunities for the future.